planning to talk in, but first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming. It's a nice weather. God helped us with a nice weather and a little breeze, which helps to take away a little bit of the heat. Everybody is asking me what happened, what happened. I'm going to go through what happened. But the first thing I want to tell you is everybody says, I'm a hero, I'm a hero. No, it's not. It's all a miracle. God made a miracle. You know, when people come together, we praise God. And that's why the more people we bring together and we praise God, the bigger it is. When I took off that day, I, I flew the same mission a day before. That day, I went over to Long Island to pick up my partner, Eric Pearson. Because we had no observers over here, I went to Republic Airport. From Republic Airport, we flew, whoever knows the map, over towards the Tappan Zee Bridge. From the Tappan Zee Bridge, we flew the, the direction to Albany. When we got about, I would say, 20 miles from Albany, I saw on the radar scope, on the GPS, that there are cells, bad weather cells, thunderstorm cells, over by Glens Falls, which is about 20, 20 to 25 miles north of Albany. I don't want to go close to them. It's not safe for a small plane to fly into thunderstorms. So we made a decision and turned back. We went down back to Hudson River and everything goes by 10 minutes, by every 15 minutes you got a report to the Coast Guard and everything was normal. We flew down in the Hudson River at 2,000 feet until the Strewsbury and the Navasek River, which for most of us, the Coast Guard people would know, but the other people, it's south, it's about 20, 20 miles south of the Verrazano Bridge. Everybody knows the Verrazano Bridge. We made a U-turn, came up back. I was supposed to go back to Farmingdale to drop off Eric. Because of air traffic control, they did not want to give me clearance to go behind Kennedy Airport on the water, unless I go down to below 500 feet, which against it's against the rules for the Coast Guard. For me, at that day, it was against the rules to fly at 500 feet. I was supposed to stay at above 1,000 feet. Being a co-pilot, I was supposed to be above 1,000. So we went up north, and we were hooked down with LaGuardia Tower. LaGuardia Tower gave us over to the next LaGuardia Tower, which is still LaGuardia's tower, and he said, the next person will give me clearance to make a right-hand turn towards Farmingdale Airport. And that's what I was waiting for, to be changed over frequency and to turn right towards the Republic Airport, which is north of LaGuardia, right around LaGuardia towards Republic. We were about Alpine Tower. By Alpine, there's two towers over there, one smaller, one bigger, and the engine started spalling. Started spalling. The first thing, Eric, which he was supposed to be here, but his father is very ill, it was an emergency, he collapsed this morning, and he, unfortunately, he should, I'm afraid he should have a speedy recovery. The first reaction from Eric was, stay over the water, stay over the water. Which is, if you know, history of people landing in the water it's not a great it's not a great reaction to stay over the water because when you land in the water it's exactly almost exactly like landing on the ground crashing the plane gets messed up and then you have the other element that people who come to rescue they have to take boats and it's very hard most people never survive landing on the water yes there was a miracle on the hudson which is also a miracle plus it's a bigger plane it can float longer but I still had the engine. It was still sputtering. And I knew I was at 2,000 feet. I wasn't losing altitude. At 2,000 feet, I know the area. I can make it from Alpine Tower to Peterborough, which is the closest airport. There's nothing coming above 2,000 feet over there. So my first reaction, turn towards Peterborough. As I was coming in, we flew. It takes the direct line from Alpine to Peterborough is right over those trees. I lost the engine completely. I was at that edge of the field over there and I lost the engine. I was looking down 
if you think this field is big, the field over there, the next field is much bigger than this one, a lot bigger. And that was the first thing I looked down, I wanted to land at that field. But that field was impossible to land, it was loaded, loaded with kids, high school kids, whatever, I don't even know, it was loaded up. So we came over the pool, over here, and we opened the window, we saw this field is full of kids as well. We opened the window and started yelling, move away, move away. We had no engine, it didn't make any noise, so they were, we thought they were going to hit us. But, for, well, you know, when we, we were, uh, I would say about a thousand feet up, they did not hit us, they didn't know where we want. They were looking up, but they had no clue. They figured somebody's doing a stunt or whatever. This field was full of kids as well. They did not move. So I came in, it's called downwind, base, and final. When I was about hit, I was still about 50 feet up. The field is full of kids. If you see that gold lead over there, that white one, it was more closer towards the trees. If you see that, there's a little black line over here on the field, straight where you look out. There was another gold lead a little bit further in from that black line. The field was full of kids. The only place where there were no kids was behind this goal lead. And if you go diagonal towards behind the other goal lead, because they were all playing soccer, trying to punch the ball into the goal. We were over at the other, that was the only place that was open. I had no choice. I made a full stall, full stall over here, right about by that sign. I was still about 50 feet up, full stall, and you drop. You need minimum of 100 feet to to climb out of a stall and that's when you have speed, like nothing. Took a nose dive back down and instead of flying into the trees, which would have been instantaneously dead because it would have burst into flames, I pushed it into the ground so the front wheel, the landing gear took a lot of beating and the landing gear collapsed. The whole engine came in, broke my feet apart, which I'm going to continue later, but that was the only place that could have stopped. I told Eric right before that, I told them, tighten your seatbelt, and if you ever make it out, just run as far away as, as you can, because I was afraid to fire, it can burn into, burst into flames. The first miracle we had, you know, when we got the report from the NTSB, what happened to that engine, a bearing gave way, everybody knows what a bearing is, it's what the crankshaft turns in. The bearing got disintegrated. They figured it went up in 38 seconds from 260 degrees, which is about the engine of the temperature, the, the engine of the, the temperature of the engine, 260, 280 degrees, which is the normal temperature, to over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Under normal circumstances, when this happens, the oil explodes in the air. If you ever heard on the news, a plane exploded in the air, this is what happened. It, 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 the crankshaft broke, it didn't broke, it melted, and that only melts at 2,000 degrees. It melted, the engine was gone. I had no idea what happened, so I tried the restarting procedure, which we all have in the head all the time. We practiced that, and we remember everything. I didn't have to go for a charge. I remembered everything, putting on the auxiliary fuel pump and everything, tried to restart, didn't budge. So that was the first miracle. The second miracle we had, that when we landed, the fuel tank did rupture. It did rupture, the fuel tank, and fuel was leaking, but it did not burst into flames. Yes, the electricity was shut, and that helped a lot, because we shut the electricity, the electric power. But it can always spark. The battery from breaking up, the whole plane was broken apart, and it was the second miracle that we had. And the third miracle is our recovery. I'm walking on metal rods. I have metal rods on my leg. In my left leg, my right leg was almost amputated at the bottom of my foot. And they, they don't even call it a fix, they call it a salvage. But thank God I'm walking. And the biggest miracle is, these kids were on the field. Ben, ben Stein is over here. He was on the field. They were all here. Nobody got hurt. And I'll tell you the truth, it's a miracle because when a plane does not have Speed, the pilot has no control. I had control over the plane until until the stall. After the stall, I had so limited, limited, limited control. 
And by grace of God, I was able to put it down and drop down. It's through miracle because under normal circumstances, you don't have control over the plane. It's all a miracle and we all got to thank God. There is a blessing that we say when you come to a place where you had a miracle. We say it in Hebrew. Which means, blesses the Lord who, gave, who made a miracle for me at this place. Whenever you go through a place that you had a miracle, you make a blessing. 